Thank you to everyone for logging into today's webinar and welcome to our discussion on managing online risks in schools. My name is John Fison and I'm the CEO of Cyberhound and this is jointly presented with Forrester, one of the most respected technology and research companies in the world and ourselves here at Cyberhound, a leading provider of unique solutions to schools. Due to time restraints and trying to fit this webinar into the 30 minutes that we've allocated to it, we won't have time for questions at the end, but we'd be delighted to hear from anyone afterwards and we will send through some follow-up material at the end. So today's agenda is packed with useful content for school leaders. We're going to start by setting the scene and looking at the development of social media and other internet communications and sharing tools within schools. This will lead us into the risks, the benefits and some recommendations. And I will then give you some background on our company and we'll show you how in practice some of these risks can be managed through a demonstration. So my name is John Fison. I'm also joined by Adam Smith, who is our head of products and acts as an advisor to schools internationally. And also Nick Hayes, one of Forrester's leading analyst, analysts focused on security and risk management, who's dialing in tonight from Boston. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome and hand over to Nick. Over to you, Nick. Thanks, John. Really happy to be here and calling in from, from far off in Boston, but uh, it's, it's great. Um, really appreciate you having me here. Um, so as, I, as John introduced, uh, my name is Nick Hayes. I'm an analyst at Forrester Research, and I have been focusing a lot of my research around uh, social media risks. And today I'm really excited to, to talk to you about this issue and get into some really interesting uh, issues around social media, how to manage it, and how to think about what you can do to better protect uh, your organization. Um, so uh, please go on to the next slide. So this, the floodgates are open, and I think we're all pretty well aware of this today. Social media channels are flourishing. Everyone is using mobile devices. Everyone is seemingly connected at all times at on any device, on any platform that they want. And it is a very difficult dilemma for us in terms of how to manage this, how to both uh, enable the right types of engagement while also making sure that we're not, uh, we're not overexposing ourselves to a variety of different types of cyberbullying, other types of online risks, and uh, a variety of issues that uh, pervade all of these digital channels. Uh, but today, what we first want to talk about is, is what we're really dealing with here. So please, next slide. And it really begins with thinking about the new digital dynamics and, and thinking about how rapidly everything has evolved. Uh, this is just a quick illustration to show that from 2005 to 2013, how we've used devices, how we've used social media, how we've used online channels has really just completely changed uh, the way that we communicate with one another. Uh, we think of Facebook, we think of other social networks as being around and, and you know, re really being integrated into our lives for a long time now, but it really wasn't. Uh, Facebook is actually only over 11 years old at this point, so just to give you a flavor of how fast uh, everything is, is moving at this point. Uh, next slide. The thing is, is that we all generally get social media today, right? Uh, this picture is kind of a funny illustration, but it, it does a fairly good job of saying, all right, I know what to do when I'm on each of these social networks. I know how to eat a donut, and I know which social network to use when, uh, when I eat that donut. If I want to go to Twitter, uh, I want to, I'm going to talk about eating that donut. If I go to Facebook, I'm going to like donuts. If I go to Foursquare, this is where I eat donuts. If I'm using Instagram, here's a vintage photo of my donut and so on. You get the point. We all generally get how it works today. Uh, next slide. The, 
the problem is that the nuances are still perplexing. The privacy settings, who is connected to who, what do they actually see, what's appropriate in terms of fr friend requests, what's not. Um, and how do we make sure that uh, all the same types of threats, the other types of issues uh, that are out there in, in our culture, in our world today, how, they're, uh, how we're managing that from all these different new social channels. Uh, next slide. The, the other part of this is that social media isn't one thing. It's many. It's not just face. It's not just the public social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google Plus. Uh, I can go on, but you, you get the point. Um, public social networks uh, create uh, an environment where, obviously, we're very well aware of what what that is. But there are very distinct different differences between each one. When you think about a public social network versus a microblog, you don't think Facebook and Twitter are that different, but some parts of it are, are actually very, very unique. Facebook uh, acts as, you can only have one account, so it acts as a form of a identity, a digital identity for you. Whereas Twitter, you can actually have several accounts. You don't have to identify by name. You need an email address, and that's about it. Um, and then there are other types of social media like Snapchat where, of course, uh, you, you know, the photos are essentially deleted and you have a much tougher time of understanding what was sent or who sent it and uh, in what context. Uh, and then uh, there's internal social networks and instant messaging. There's the broader social web, which is really any online channel that enables interactive engagement. Uh, it can even be news uh, outlets that are uh, providing comment feeds, uh, Reddit, all these different sites. And then social gaming and virtual worlds. Uh, people, kids, everyone is using um, and playing video games on PlayStation, Xbox, uh, and other types of uh, video games online. And then there's dark social. And of course, there are issues in terms of thinking about all the different things that can happen on there due to the way that it's made uh, anonymous uh, types of behavior possible. So when you're thinking about the range, there's a broad set of considerations that you have to take into account for each of these types of different channels. And the reason for that is that in some cases you can identify as yourself, sometimes you can act anonymously. How intricate are the privacy settings? Do you have any control or is it just all public or all private? Uh, so all these issues come up and come into play when you think about any types of engagement online, any type of communications. Uh, next slide, please. And the social ecosystem is evolving rapidly. Uh, this slide is, is very small and hard to see, but this circle has over 200 different social networks that are uh, around today, categorized by each of these different, uh, into these different categories. Uh, next slide. And what we realize is that it, it, it actually tells more about us than we realize. Uh, I know I may have made you hungry by looking at this uh, slide of delicious uh, curly fries, but there's a point here. Um, actually, studies have shown that uh, when you uh, like curly fries, it is actually an indication of uh, intelligence, of higher levels of IQ. Um, and so what it actually shows is that depending on the likes, depending on what you actually use and how you actually associate and engage with different aspects of your social media accounts, you're exposing more information than you may even, rea may even realize about yourself. So next slide, please. So jokes aside, the, the, the risks of social are real and serious. There's cyberbullying, profanity, discrimination. All this is happening online with uh, adults and kids alike. Um, there are real issues uh, pertaining to this and how you manage and mitigate the, the issues related to this type of activity and how you oversee that uh, on these channels is even more difficult to, to come into play. And discrimination is just as difficult, whether it's racial slurs or sexual abuse. These things are, are happening, not, not to frighten any one, but it's just these are actual uh, real events that have taken place. Um, the second thing is uh, physical security and safety risks. Um, you know, talking about where you're eating and what you're going, what vacation you're going on exposes more uh, about your location. Um, the CEO of Dell, uh, Michael Dell, his daughter actually started tweeting um, their travel uh, plans and uh, actually started. Uh, tweeting about uh, his uh, business travel as well. And all of a sudden she started gaining all of these followers because it was an indication that uh, they could 
identify where uh, Michael Dell, the CEO, was traveling. And Dell actually spends close to $3 million annually, U.S. dollars annually, on just protecting uh, Michael Dell and his family from a physical security standpoint. And then there are issues of social engineering where people are creating fake accounts that look real, that actually seem to be legitimate faces, um, all in the hopes of uh, interacting and connecting with you to gain more information about you or um, other people. Um, and then there are malware and phishing scams. There's defamation and reputational risks. There's inappropriate activity going on uh, on forums and chat rooms. Um, next slide, please. But the benefits, they're, they're too valuable. All these different types of online engagement um, are, are really important to the way that we actually uh, engage and actually work with one another today. There are benefits for kids for collaborating, for sharing information, for connecting with uh, school schedules, um, and for thinking about how to engage out of the classroom, whether it's on group projects or different types of uh, uh, group assignments. And then, um, in addition, you can use it as a channel to advocate for your school, to talk about positive behavior, health and well-being. Um, and it can also act as a way to detect life-threatening events. Whether or not we permit the use of an engagement of these different types of applications and channels, people are using it. And so by engaging and using these channels effectively as well and providing the right managing uh, capabilities around it, you can actually uh, become uh, more privy to and more aware of potentially uh, instances where people are putting their lives at risk. Kids are uh, saying things that uh, are you know, pretty uh, damaging to their overall health or well-being. Um, and then finally, there's also uh, issues that actually come into play regarding legal uh, negligence and liability. Um, actually, two uh, legal experts at the University of Canberra, uh, they uh, uh, warned that potentially the use of technology from the classroom to the playground that um, schools could be held responsible for cyberbullying um, if it occurred on school grounds, if it happened during school hours, or using school-owned technology. They even went on to say that you know if the cyberbullying occurred even out of hours, but in connection with a school-related activity, or if the school didn't have the right controls to protect students, that they could be held liable. And even parents can be held liable and negligent as well. In the U.S., there was a case where um, their parents, uh, the parents of kids were held liable because even after a legal case where the kid was uh, found to uh, uh, make offensive comments and was forced to take them down because it defamed, defamed a fellow classmate. Um, the fake Facebook account wasn't taken down for over nine months. And so a court found the parents liable for not uh, ensuring that that action was taken place. So what do we do about this? There's a lot of risks, there's a lot of benefits, um, and there's a lot of reasons why we need to be on there providing the right controls. And so. What do we need to do? Uh, next slide, please. What we need to do is guide appropriate behavior and act actively monitor for violations. We have to think about that overall flooding of all these channels and figure out how we can actually provide the right guidelines, figure out how to guide the right behavior, but still enable the right benefits. Next slide, please. And so what I tend to recommend is that you start to think about what all of the risks are, brainstorm everything that could potentially happen, whether it's uh, online, within your organization, or outside of it, and break it down into whether it's within your control, whether it's within your internal environment, or whether it's happening externally. And so depending on whether it's within your internal environment or if it's happening on other devices or applications or personal social media accounts outside of your control, you provide the right types of abilities to monitor your external environment. And for your internal environment, you're thinking about how you can manage it, how you can mitigate the risks, how you can embed and enforce the policies that you set. Next slide, please. The point is we can't afford to keep our heads in the sand. We have to take our heads out and put it on a swivel. Next slide, please. So I'm going to leave you with a couple recommendations. I want 
uh, the, the first thing is that you need to uh, encourage this social activity, this online activity school-wide, but set appropriate ex expectations for everyone involved, teachers, students, uh, anyone that is um, going to be participating or possibly um, on school property, you want to make sure that you have the right uh, guidelines but are still finding ways to actively encourage it. The second recommendation, and cyber, uh, John is going to get into this in more detail after, after I finish up, but how you can actually establish the effective technical controls, including security protocols, web access, content moderation, how you can actually find the right ways to, after you set the policies and you set the right guidelines, how you can follow through with the effective enforcement and technical controls to do that. Thirdly, look for ways to monitor for external events and for overall community sentiment. Try to track your overall community presence. It can have some real positive benefits, but it can also be a way to, again, search for ways to detect potential risks to your organization. And finally, and this is something I always like to leave uh, and end my presentation on, I always try to say lead by example. The rest of your uh, institution, everyone else will be looking at you to determine what the right things are to say, what the right expectations are, and if they see you doing it and engaging in the right ways with the right people, that's the best practice because they're going to start behaving in those ways as well. And that, that, with that, I will actually turn it back over to John. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I think that was a great framing of the risk landscape as well as the opportunities of the integration into the teaching and learning environments of some of these newer collaboration tools. And we've certainly seen in the schools that we work with some great examples that we'd be very happy to share of teachers and principals and other staff in schools using these capabilities for, uh, for really positive benefits. So let me give you a little bit of background to Cyberham before we move into the demonstration. We're, we're a well-established company. We've been in business now for 17 years, focused on schools, and we're based in Australia, but we work with schools across the world. And the schools we work with come from all sectors, sizes, and also primary as well as secondary schools, as well as larger school districts and government-based organisations. And indeed, we have contributed to some government thinking and, and strategy and policy around cyber safety within schools here in Australia. We use a unique and patented technology that we're going to show you that delivers the capabilities to really help assist in this uh, battle to manage the online risks that we're talking about here today. So our value proposition is quite simple. We help schools enable new and more efficient learning in the classroom while ensuring students remain safe and protected from online threats. And a byproduct of our capabilities, which we won't show today, but it's often significant cost savings for schools in administration and in the internet costs associated with delivering digital content into the curriculum. We're very pleased to announce our Sixth Sense technology, which we've recently uh, come up with this, this branding of our overall platform. And the reason we've called it Sixth Sense technology is because it delivers insights and intelligence that goes beyond what ordinary solutions can provide. And the key element we're gonna focus on today is the behavioral analytics capabilities. And while we go through this, we're not trying to suggest that technology is a silver bullet. We're not trying to suggest that it has every answer to all of these problems, but we do know from experience, and we do know from the customers that have had huge benefits from this, that it really can act to complement all of the other tools and training and communication methods that schools use to help protect their students. So the sixth sense technology that Adam's going to demonstrate in a moment will show this in action. This really does provide the necessary insights and actionable intelligence for school leaders to take proactive action to prevent issues escalating and to provide support to students in need. 
So this can, can help support student well-being, while also ensuring, as Nick showed through his talk, that all of the benefits available through these new tools are available within the classroom as deemed appropriate by each school. This then has the added advantage of ensuring that students are developing as responsible digital citizens and that schools are helping to prepare the students for life outside of the school and beyond the school. So I'm now going to hand over to Adam Smith, our head of products, who's going to walk us through a short demonstration of our technology. Thanks, John. Today I'm going to provide some demonstrations around how our technology helps schools manage social media risks and provides actionable intelligence. In this case, a Google search is being presented by a student on inappropriate content such as buying drugs online. This content can be viewed and matched against our patterns and presented with a block which is customizable by the school to better assist that student in acceptable uh, searching content. In other areas, Google searches that may involve things such as eating disorders can be either allowed or blocked. In this instance, we tend not to block that content as we don't want to alarm the student, but can provide actionable intelligence through to the pastoral care team to assist that student moving forward. This covers platforms such as Google, but also Bing. In this instance, a student is searching on self-harm obviously something to be concerned about. Again, we allow that search content to go through, but we provide that information through to the pastoral care team to assist that student later on. The technology also expands into items such as cyberbullying. In this particular case, a student is emailing another student using the Gmail platform. Obviously, the content of this email is rather nasty and therefore we can provide an actionable result to that which blocks that content midstream. This, pre this prevents the other end or the recipient receiving this content altogether and allows behavioural checking of the student who is sending that content. Again, all of these messages are customisable by the school and can provide feedback to the student. In situations where this content is acceptable, then obviously those emails are sent through as you would expect and no intelligence or data is recorded for good emails. Moving on to some of the more social platforms such as Facebook, our technology allows us to control both posts onto the wall and also instant messaging from within the Facebook system. In this particular example, a student is uh, presenting Facebook with inappropriate wall posts around bullying or a potential bullying activity. Again, we are able to post this in real time, sorry, block this in real time, so preventing this post from actually hitting the internet. This again allows the student to, to change their activity and present a much, much nicer post. Moving across into the social uh, platform around chat, um, this is a very common area that students uh, interact with each other and a lot of cyberbullying actually occurs inside the chat, uh, chat windows. Again, using our technology, we are able to interact in stream and students who may be attempting to bullying each other using the social media chat section can also be blocked. Again, custom block messages can be inserted into the instant messaging screens. Of course, appropriate chat will be allowed to go through and again, no information is recorded. Moving on to some other platforms that are very common in education is the YouTube platform. And this allows students to, of course, uh, do searches on relevant content, in this case, maybe football videos, and allow that student to browse the videos as they would require uh, when they're at school. However, if those searches move off onto inappropriate content, such as searching for content like ISIS videos or propaganda, we can again block that content uh, in real stream. Please note that a lot of these block messages can be customised depending on the type of rule that we're actually uh, using. 
Now, of course, there are many other platforms that the CyberHound solution actually covers, um, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to focus on some of the reporting of what we've just seen. So reporting can happen in a number of different ways. This can be provided through as instant alert emails to deputy principals, principals, uh, or student welfare officers. This provides obviously very detailed information around who the user is, what Facebook profile they were using when they sent or received that information, and of course the content that was included in that. This provides actionable intelligence for the school to be able to speak with that child, both from a behavioural perspective and also to assist a student that may be in need. Inside the platform is also further detailed information around the particular student, all of the rules that may have been breached by that student and provide an overarching feedback of information to again the pastoral care or deputy principals for example to assist that student in either changing behaviours or identifying those students who are at risk. In addition, information can also be sent from the platform to a relevant member of staff. For example, if a, if a staff member is responsible for the senior students within the school, reports just relating to those students can be sent through to that individual. This allows a distributed environment of student welfare to allow not just one person to be responsible, but a team of student welfare, team, uh, welfare staff to be uh, accessible. Here is an example of for, uh, a Facebook post, um, which we saw before, um, which has been blocked. Um, it is clickable and allows the pastoral care team to look at those Facebook profiles to better identify that student as well. And that pretty much sums up the live demonstration component of this solution. Thank you very much, Adam. I hope that helped to give a flavour for the type of capabilities that are available now for schools around the world. And I hope that today's webinars given everyone useful information that can help develop these programs within your own schools. We are going to, we've got a quote here from one of our uh, customers that's using this technology and they've had some, some excellent benefits from it. And one of the pieces of collateral that we'll be sending a link to after this webinar will include a case study from this particular school. So thank you for, for attending. Um, it doesn't stop here. As Nick said, you know, take action, uh, be a leader. And if you would like further information from us, please visit our webpage, which is cyberhound.com slash Forrester. We will send you a link. And we are also offering any school that attended today's events a 30 minutes cyber safety assessment by one of our experienced consultants that we hope might be able to provide some insight and value specific to your situation. So thank you to Nick for dialing in from Forrester, Adam, our head of products, and thank you to everyone for attending today's event. We hope it's been useful.